compile a list of the top five most requested transitions from the past couple of years, then JFK Jr. would be right up there because so many people asked. And I tried a couple of times actually to get into the energy and do the pictures and it was almost like I didn't have permission. I couldn't get through until I tried this week and suddenly it was all okay. Pictures came. So these are the transition pictures for JFK Jr., John F. Kennedy Jr. He died in 1999 at the age of 38 when the plane he was piloting crashed into the ocean off the coast of Martha's Vineyard. His wife was with him and also her sister, I think. And the problem was that he had qualified for his pilot's license the year before, but he wasn't yet adept at flying at night time or in a mist or whatever. And that's what happened. He misjudged the altitude of the plane and took it down. He was actually a very successful guy in his own right. Obviously, he was the son of President John F. Kennedy, but he was fairly accomplished in his own right. He was a lawyer, a prosecutor, actually, in New York for about four years. He was a journalist. He started a magazine with somebody else called George, which I don't think did very well. And I think he wanted to be an actor. I know he appeared on an episode of Murphy Brown, but uh, it was just not possible because of his position in... American royalty, in a way. He was wealthy, he was privileged, he was good-looking, and when he was younger, because uh, JFK was assassinated and Robert Kennedy was assassinated in 1968, Jackie Kennedy whisked him off to Greece in case he was assassinated as well, but in the end, he died at the age of 38 anyway. Now, the autopsy said that he died on impact when the plane crashed into the Atlantic Ocean. But the pictures suggest otherwise. And I found that really, really intriguing. When I went into the energy of this picture, all I could see was him with back projection screens on either side. You know, like they used to have in movies where people would sit in a car and they wouldn't really be going anywhere. There'd just be a screen with a landscape going by outside. It was a bit like that, but on each side. I am a little worried by that image because it's what my imagination would throw up if I were trying to imagine a plane going down. There were things flying by and stuff. So I'd like you to just discount that as a possible imagined scenario. But then I got an image of him simply hanging there and below him was a very, very large dark hole into which he was slowly descending, suggesting that he didn't die on impact. He actually drowned following the impact. Because as he went down, the hole above him closed like an aperture on a camera. And the next thing I saw, he was being flushed down a chute into that symbolic cave. I always see he landed in a big pool of water. The water may be significant or it may not. Obviously, he drowned. It could mean that. But interestingly, when John Denver died in a plane crash in the ocean, and when Steve Irwin, the Australian conservationist, died in the ocean, he had water too. And it almost felt, and this was my guess at the time, like public mourning. So the water that came down the chute and flushed him out could easily have been mourning from the public because I'm sure there was a ton of that at the time. Once he got his bearings and realized that something had changed, it was curious how much lighter he felt. I could feel this release of, oh, I'm free. Of the name, the reputation, the family, the expectations something like that maybe, but he felt a sense of lightness that he hadn't crossed over. 
with. And, in fact, he lifted off the ground, but not in a floaty, laid-back, succumbing-to-the-process way. He had a definite agenda. He was just darting over there and back over here and over here. It's just back and forth, like Tinkerbell in Peter Pan. He was going places. And at first I thought, oh, he's looking for his wife and her sister. Because this is a question that's come up time and time again. Do people who die together tragically in a plane crash or some other disaster, do they go through the tunnel together? Do they ascend together? And my answer was always no. We live individual lives. We have our own soul's path, our own consciousness. We go through our own journey. And that seemed to be the case here. There was just him. The others were having their own transition experience. But although he felt much lighter and more relaxed, he still couldn't just sit there or walk gently. He had to go bing, bing, bing. It was just all over the place, including up the tunnel. He just shot up it. There wasn't much thought to it. It was like, oh, this is my agenda. Uh, now I've got to go up here. Okay, this is where I go. Uh, and off he went. And I thought it was going to be a straight road through, actually, because he seemed so determined and so jet propelled. In actual fact, about two thirds of the way up the tunnel, there was, it was like a spider's web, but each strand of the web was coated in something sticky. Uh, I thought at first it was like earwax uh, or marmalade. I wasn't quite sure what it was, but he went straight into it and got stuck. And this was that break that the universe puts on a lot of people to say, no, 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 no. Our agenda, Grace's agenda now, not yours. There are no expectations of you, no demands of you. There's nothing you have to be, no way you have to go. You are released from the demands of the society you've left behind. And now you must release from your side too. And it was really difficult. This was ingrained in his consciousness's DNA almost. I must do this. I have to live up to these expectations. These standards apply to me and I must honour them. I have to go. Things to do, people to see. And the universe goes, no, okay. Stay there, stay stuck until you agree to surrender. And in the same way, there was a difference in feeling between his mortal self and his conscious transitioning self, that lightness I told you about. So there was here, when he went limp and allowed himself to peel away from this web, so there was a similar lightness of release. Now, there's no time in this environment we're in. It's timer, so I don't know how long that would have taken his consciousness to uh, adapt. But there was a moment where he goes, okay. And he just peeled away and lay on the ground. And then he could crawl through and go through to the other side. And in this state, this non-energized state, he was able to approach the light. Now, it's very often a dome. In his case, it wasn't. It was like an amorphous, misty mass swirling in front of him. And he would have said, if we were able to talk in this kind of way, he would have said, what am I to do? What does this mean? Do I become something else? He had a few questions related to the process. Is this a doorway? Is it a portal? 
Do I walk straight in or do I wait for somebody to come and get me? What is this? And the swirling light just continued. There's no explanation. There's no invitation. It's just a current that has its own momentum that pulls you forward and makes the idea of stepping into the light more natural and attractive. But he was still asking questions. So what happens next? Do I have steps to climb or do I go around the back? Is there a way in specifically? His head was dominated by curiosity, but also a sense of, I need to know this before I do anything, before I commit. I need to know all the facts. What's going on? Part of his mortal self had crept through the web and was still with him. And there was nothing to do. There was nothing to think, nothing to know. All he had to do was step into this misty light. And when he did, it wrapped itself around him like a shawl and he disappeared into it. But it was fascinating in his case how much of a sense of obligation he had to his mortal identity. It's inevitable, given the kind of life he led and the family he was born into and his status in American society as a kind of social demigod. He couldn't shed that because it was so deeply ingrained. And even when he had the chance to relax and just let go and just allow the universe grace to do its work, it was like, no, no, I must be masterful at this. I must control this. I must willfully find an entrance. Or, I don't know what he was looking for, but just, I must do it. <laughs> it was very arduous. It must have been quite difficult to be him to live up to what was expected of him by his own family, maybe. Maybe they expected greatness. But by the media, by the public, I don't know, whoever he felt obligated to. But none of it matters. It doesn't matter on this side of the ethereal divide or on that side. But on that side, you really have to let go of it. You really have to get a sense of perspective about what and who you are. A divine being returning home to the whole. It's a simple process that we complicate because of our ego's demands and the expectations of others. Letting that go is vital to transitioning and ascending. And probably, in his case, and a lot of other cases too, much of what is taken on in life is needlessly burdensome. How often do we carry these things round with us? Our oh, shoulders like, like rocks, when we could simply lay that burden down. Put it down, let it go. Allow yourself to move forward unencumbered to release expectations to defy those who would put these burdens these rocks on your shoulders and say no i'm not submitting to those tribal demands i am going forward on my own terms in a relaxed way i don't accept this external agenda you're trying to lay on me that was his lesson But he did it. And he entered the light, the shifting, swirling light, a freer, happier, and less encumbered man. And we can be the same. We just have to let go of the expectations 
of others and be our true soul selves. It's hard, but it makes for a happier life and an easier transition, it seems. And that's what I learned from John F. Kennedy, Jr.